All right, welcome back. So today we're going to be making a menu here that we can navigate with a controller. So as you can see, our game is now titled Legally Not Zelda, which I thought was, I don't know, kind of funny. Um, but we can, right now I'm using an Xbox One controller and I'm just using the left joystick to select between these two options. And when I push the A button, it selects the option I chose. So yeah, let's uh, dive right in and get started. Okay, so welcome back. Today, uh, first thing before we do anything else, we're gonna need to make a few con changes to how we're using our controller. So right now, if you're using an, I have an Xbox One controller in my hand, the axes should work fine. But I had thought that button A was joystick button zero, but it's not. So if you're pressing the A button, nothing's happening. So we're gonna need to make a change to that. So um, let's go out of play mode here. Let's open up edit, let's go to project settings, and then from project settings to input. Now on input, I've already defined certain axes that I'm using here. One of the ones is attack, and I have it set to be joystick button zero. And I just did a quick Google search for an Xbox controller layout on Unity, and the A button is really joystick button 16. So back to Unity. I'm going to change this on attack from joystick button 0 to joystick button 16. I'm going to do the same thing with submit. The first submit is joystick button 0. I'm going to make that 16. And then my second weapon, I'm going to make that joystick button 17, which is the B button, I think. Let's double check here. Yep, 17 is the B button. All right, so I'm just gonna save that and let's close out of here. All right, now if I hit play, you can see that our player is going to be able to attack with the, the A button and fire arrows with the B button. Cool. Now there's a few issues that we still have with this though. First of all, if I open up the player and I just want to keep that open and keep your eye over here on these hitboxes. If I'm going any kind of diagonal, so if I'm going exactly left, exactly right, exactly up, exactly down, oh hey, down is especially an issue. We'll fix that. Um, I turn on more than one hitbox at a time, and that's a bit of an issue. So we're actually going to address that in the next video. For today, though, we're going to be taking a look at using our new joystick functionality to navigate through menus. So I'm going to pause out of this scene and save what I have so far. Now I'm going to go to create a new scene. So I'm going to go to my scenes folder here and I'm going to make a new scene. I want to create a new, where is it? It's on here somewhere. There it is, scene. I'm going to call this uh, start menu. Now, the, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm going to call this start menu. Uh, apologies in advance if I'm sniffling a lot today. I'm, I'm seriously just getting over. I had a cold, and then almost immediately after I got strep throat, so I've kind of been out of commission for a while, so I'm still a bit sniffly, and I'll try not to sniffle right into the microphone, I promise. Uh, okay, so I'm going to open up the start menu scene. And right now it's just a blank scene. I'm going to add a few things to it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to get is a piece of art for our backdrop. Now there are many pieces of art that you can find. I just looked on itch.io and found some backdrops. Um, I think the one I liked was the one that was called for... Actually, let's do cave entrance. So I'm going to go to my art folder, and I'll include a link to this in the description. I'm going to go to Cave Entrance, pull this in, and I want this to be a great big backdrop for everything. So on my Cave Entrance here, I want to set the uh, filter mode to point, compression to none, and I'm not going to worry about the pixels per unit at the moment because I'm going to be using this as a canvas image. So in my scene, I'm going to create a new uh, UI image. I'll zoom way out to actually see it. 
in this image, oh, it says file could not be read. That's weird. Let me delete this then. Yep, I want to delete it. So my image, I'm going to scale up to take the entire screen. So I'm going to grab the blue corners, pull it up. It's going to kind of snap once it hits the edges of the screen. And then I'm also going to resize the uh, anchors so that the anchors make it take up the whole screen. So if you hold down, uh, yep, it's if you hold down shift when you're looking at the anchors here, I'm going to choose the one in the lower right, which is going to expand these little white triangles, which are the UI anchors, to be the entire scene. Now, let me see if I can find that, uh, that image again. All right, sorry about that. So the background we're going to be using is from a different set because I couldn't find the set I originally liked. So uh, this is from a set of backgrounds that you can find for a game engine called Superpowers. And I'll include a link to the assets in the description. I'm just going to pull this into my scene. And then again, just like I did for the other one, I'm going to make this uh, have no filter. And for compression, it's going to have none. And then I'm just going to apply that. And now if I go back to my image here, I'm going to have my image have that as its source. And that kind of fits the tone of our game there, this kind of pixely, foresty background. It's not perfect. It doesn't go exactly with the style. There's no black outlines like everything else has, but it'll be fine. Now I'm going to rename this to be background image. And I'm going to make a couple different things here. First thing I'm going to make is some text. So I'm going to go to UI and I'm going to use Text Mesh Pro for my text. I'm going to make this nice and big. And I'm going to call this, <laughs> let's make a funny title. Let's say Legally Not Zelda. And since I don't want to say Zelda, like uh, legally not Zelda sounds pretty good. Uh, I want this to be aligned in the center in each direction. My font size, I'm going to bring that way, 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 way up. Okay, and then let's try one of the other fonts I've made. That's not too bad. Let's go a little bit bigger, though. And let's make this kind of like that. All right. And let's give this a nice outline as well. So extra settings, face color, outline. There we go. So I want my outline to be, let's actually use one of the dark, dark greens from the environment as the outline color. Come on now. Huh, that's weird. Okay. Well, I'll just find a dark green myself. That'll be good. All right. And let's make our... Let's make our outline a little less thick. Say 0 0.2. And I think we can even make this bigger again. So... I'll make that take up that, and let's go. You can mess with this a whole lot. I'm not meaning to spend a million hours on this, but I want something that looks good. There we go. Now I'm going to make a few buttons here. So I'm going to UI, button, and for now I'm just going to have two of them. So I'm going to have one button for new game and one button for quit to desktop. So this button is going to say um, new game. And I want this to have do, 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 best fit. And I'm going to give it a font of bit script. And then I'm going to duplicate this button by control D. And this one is going to be quit to desktop. Now, ideally, we'd have a continue button here as well. So you can add that if you want to right now, but we'll get to doing that later. Quit to desktop. There we go. Now, the background for these buttons isn't very uh, very fitting with our theme. So let's go to art, and if we go to that GFX 
file into objects. I think there's a couple things that would look okay as buttons in here, I thought. Let's open up our sprite editor. Our dialog window wouldn't be too bad as a button. Yeah, let's do that. So 128, and it's already 9 sliced too. So for our button, our source image, we're going to use objects 128. And we want this to be sliced, which it is. That's not too bad. And then for our other button, we'll do the same. Um, objects 128. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. Yeah, that's kind of good. So now, how we can use our controller with this. If we hit play, the buttons will highlight and they'll work when we use our mouse. But we want to be able to use either the keyboard or the gamepad to do this. Now, I had thought like, long and hard about how I could possibly make that happen. Uh, and I was going to make this really complicated script, but it turns out Unity already thought about that, just like other things I've made more complex. And all you really have to do is one teeny tiny thing. So every time you make a canvas, Unity also makes an event system. The event system already has all of the standalone input modules. So it knows what the horizontal axis, the vertical axis, it knows the submit button, which is important because we said that earlier. It knows the cancel button. You can put in uh, actions per second. I like to have this down relatively low, like say maybe two. And that's how many actions you would have if you're holding down a feature. Now, the only thing we need to do to make this work is change first selected. And my first selected is going to be just that first button. So now if I hit play, that first button is going to be highlighted. And I can use my gamepad to go back and forth. And it, it's kind of hard to see because it's not a super big impact when they're highlighted. I'm going to change my highlighted color to be, let's say, kind of greenish here. And then I'll do the same thing for my other button. Um, this isn't going to be perfect, so let's just move. No, okay. For some reason my color wheel doesn't want to work today. So we'll go kind of greenish. It's different greens, but it'll be okay. Now if I hit play, that new game button is going to get green right away. Because it's the first button in the invit in the event system. Yeah, my greens totally don't match, but you can see what's going on. Now if I press A, you can see it changes, and that's because it's recognizing that I'm pressing the button. Now, to make that button actually do something, I'm going to make a script. So in my scripts folder here, um, this is going to be game stuff, create C sharp script, and I'll call this, um, might as well call it main menu. How about, and then I'll open this up in Visual Studio, and I'll be right back. All right, so there's just a few things I have to do here. First, I need to add using Unity Engine dot scene management so that we can use the scene manager. And then I'm going to create methods for both of our buttons. So they need to be public so the button can read them. We'll call this public void new game. And then we'll call the other one public void quit to desktop. Now the new game button is going to do scene manager dot load scene. And for now I'm just going to hard code this in. I'm going to load in sample scene, but you could make a variable here in case you wanted to load into like a tutorial or something. And then for quit to desktop, I'm just going to do application dot quit. And it's not going to do anything in the editor, but it wouldn't stand alone. So jumping back into Unity, I'm going to grab my canvas, 
because it makes the most sense to put this on my canvas to me. And I'm going to put my main menu script on there. And on my button, the one that's the new game button, the first button, after Unity things for a second. <laughs> okay, and then on my button here, I'm going to add an on-click event. And this is going to come from the canvas. And from the canvas, it's going to come from the main menu script. And from the main menu script, it's going to do a new game. And then button one is going to add a new event. It's going to come from the, oh, I don't want to do that. It's going to come from the uh, canvas. And from the canvas, main menu. And from main menu, quit to desktop. Now, before this will work, I need to go to file, build settings. I need to add the open scene. And I want this to be in the zero position. So I'm just going to drag it up there. All right, now if I hit play, and I did everything right, this should work. So let's try this out. <laughs> All right, so quit to desktop won't do anything because we're in the editor. If we go to new game though, there we go. We got our game starting up. So yeah, that's how you can make a pretty easy uh, menu navigable with your controller. So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Lots of really cool people there doing lots of really cool stuff with this. Um, so it's definitely something I'd suggest checking out. Otherwise, you can have yourself a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.